So you want to become a penetration tester and you need to know where to practice. That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. But if there's anything that I really want you to get from this video and you're thinking about closing out of it, please, if you're new, skip to the warning section of this video. I think this is going to be really helpful for you, especially when you're new. But I hope you watch the entire video because I think this is going to really help you in figuring out where you need to be practicing and the fastest route to become a penetration tester. Trust me, I'm your doctor. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So if you are brand new and you know nothing, it's pretty obvious that you're gonna need some sort of guidance. And I have two free courses here on YouTube. I'm gonna link those down below. But if you're new and you really don't know a whole lot and you don't know where to start and you don't even know how to set up a Kali Linux attack box, or what exactly it is that you need to be attacking when you look at a web application or you look at an in-map scan, I recommend you start with one of these two videos. One is going to be web-based focused and the other is gonna be web-based with more network enumeration, which is what you're gonna to need to know if you want to become a penetration tester. So both of those are linked down below and along with this, you're going to need a Hack the Box subscription and I think it's only like 11 US dollars for one month of Hack the Box, and you're gonna have a really good idea of whether or not you want to continue pursuing this, and by the time you reach the end of one of these courses, you're gonna have a really good, solid foundation to move on to the next step. After you finish going through one of my courses, I recommend you just go ahead and keep that Hack the Box subscription, and what I think you should do at this point is sort out the boxes, the retired machines on Hack the Box, and sort them by difficulty, go to the easy ones, and then pick out some of these easy boxes, go and read the walkthroughs. You can just Google the name of the box all with HTB and walkthrough, and then read that walkthrough. And then I recommend going to Ipsec's YouTube channel and finding that specific box and watching his video, and then launch the box yourself on your own Kali machine, and go ahead and attack that box, and do not go back to the walkthrough, and do not go back to the YouTube video. This is gonna force you to remember what you read and what you watched and it's going to really help you understand how to enumerate and it's really going to ingrain this attack method so i recommend you do this with at least 10 different boxes read the walkthrough watch a ipsec video on the walkthrough and then go and attack that box without any help no videos so that you really ingrain what you're doing in your memory without getting help so when you reach that point that you think you're ready to start doing easy boxes without any walkthroughs and without any help I recommend at this point, if you're on a budget, you can cancel that Hack the Box subscription and get a one month subscription to Proving Grounds put out by Offensive Security. Offensive Security's boxes are gonna be way easier than those on Hack the Box. I think I just did a box, I think it was Meta 2, that was put out just a couple of days ago by Hack the Box and it was rated as an easy box. And I think it took me probably six or seven hours to root that box. And I actually got a Proving Grounds subscription just to see the difference and how hard the boxes were. And I think in about that same six or seven hour period, I think I rooted four different boxes, two easy and two medium on Proving Grounds. So the level of entry is way easier on Proving Grounds than it would be on Hack the Box. And the reason I recommend you go there beyond just the boxes being easy is it's really hard to get walkthroughs for offensive security. And this is really gonna cause you to do a lot of enumeration. And if you get a hint from them, then you lose points for that specific machine. And I think you can only get a couple of hints and one walkthrough a day. So one of the things I like to do after I root a box is I like to go ahead and look at their walkthrough and see if they do things differently. And sometimes they do. So that way I can learn additional ways more than just the way I attacked this box or I went through and rooted this machine. I do the same thing with Hack the Box. After I finish a box, when I am able to get access to the walkthroughs and the videos such as Ipsec, I like to go and watch those videos and read those walkthroughs because not everyone does the box the same way. And this is really gonna help you understand different ways to attack a specific vulnerability. So once you are regularly completing the medium and even some of the hard boxes on offensive security, Then I recommend you go back to Hack the Box and start doing those easy medium machines. And they're gonna be about at the level of the hard machines on Proving Grounds. And here you can just continue practicing with and without 
walkthroughs and begin to hone your skills. But once you're good in confidence and attacking single boxes, you can go and check out Hack the Boxes Active Directory and start working on their Active Directory labs and their course. I think they have an Active Directory course. And then also Try Hack Me has Active Directory walkthroughs and machines and courses. You can go and do those there as well. And once you have completed all of that, you will be ready to start taking the official courses and exams to become a penetration tester. Now, I want to issue a warning to all of the beginners. When you first start out, especially when you're doing proving grounds and you're in offensive securities labs, is one of the things they really like to do that I'm not really a very big fan of, is they like you to enumerate and find random exploits on the internet, on Google, on GitHub, and then you need to use those in order to get a foothold or root on a specific machine and you need to read through the code even if you don't know how to look at the urls look at the inputs that it's going to take from you and try and understand what is going on one of the things i like to do when i come across a github page that just i don't really trust and this happens a lot when you're going to be new and they're going to be having you pull random tools off of github that maybe have like nine stars or not very many you need to be able to read the code and i try to just read the code and then manually pull off the exploit without using that specific tool but if you do end up having to use the tool or you're not sure what the code is doing but you think that it's the one you need to be using then i recommend shut down your Kali machine take a snapshot or an image of that specific attack box use the tool and if it works great and if it doesn't same thing's going to happen i want you to revert your attack box to that earlier snapshot and then just go ahead and delete the one that you installed the tool on so that way you're not downloading some kind of bug on your own attack machine this is something you really need to be aware of when you're new so that is my warning for you and if you don't know how to read any code i suggest you start to learn now and my final tip for you is to take good notes when i take notes i use OneNote, and some of you have been asking to see what my notes look like and they're really not even that good at this point i have memorized pretty much everything that i have inside my OneNote. i know what i need to do and i can just use the help page so I can find the specific flags I need. But these were my notes really early on. And I suggest you take really good notes. And if you're not a note taker, there are plenty of good notes on GitHub. I've shown them to you before on my YouTube channel. You can just go out to Google. And I like to just recommend new people type in OSCP GitHub notes, and then just click one of those, save it, and then you'll have a good start on some notes. You can even make a pull request or copy that and then modify it as you see necessary. So this is my recommendation on how to practice with a few other tips. Thanks for watching.